Hello and welcome back fellow path integrators. Today we have a very beautiful integral and a very beautiful technique to solve this integral. We're going to use complex integration indirectly because we're going to use the residuum theorem. There's a way how to use the residuums of a function um, of a rational function to calculate improper integrals like this one. But there are certain conditions that need to be satisfied. So the first condition is if we have an improper integral that goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, which is a rational function px divided by qx dx, then the first condition is that the degree of q must be bigger or equal than the degree of p plus 2. So as we can see in our function here, this condition is satisfied because the degree of the function q, which is in the denominator, is 4 and the degree of the function in the, uh, on, the on top, I forgot the name, uh, how is it? Numerator? I think it's numerator. Anyway, so in the numerator is, uh, is a scalar. So it's 0. So what we do now is we have the we know that the degree of the function q is bigger than the degree of the function p plus 2 how do we actually get the result of this integral well we have to sum over the residuums of the zeros of the function q of x so let's write that down so this integral here this integral here ooh, what happened um Let's just write it like this, minus infinity up to plus infinity, p of x divided by q of x dx, and this in the end is 2 pi i times the sum from k equals 1 up to n over the residua of the function f. So this here is the function f at the points x, k, whereas x, k is the zeros of q of x with the condition that the imaginary part of x k is bigger than zero. So we're not taking all zeros, we're only taking those zeros whose imaginary part is bigger than zero, and then we calculate the residua of those, and then we uh, sum those up to get the result, to get the value of the integral. So the last thing that we need to know is how do we actually calculate the residuum after we have the singularities, the zeros of q of x with imaginary part bigger than zero. And this is quite easy for a rational function like ours. So if f of x is p of x divided by q of x, then the residuum of the function f at a point x k, this k is ugly, x k, is p of xk divided by the derivative of q evaluated at xk. So now we got everything what we, uh, that we need in order to show that this integral is actually equal to pi. So let's go. This integral that we have minus infinity up to plus infinity, 4 divided by 4 plus x to the power 4 dx, we can extract the 4 out of the integral, so we have 4 times minus infinity up to plus infinity of 1 divided by 4 plus x to the power of 4 dx. And now we have to calculate this integral here. And therefore, what we first do is we calculate the zeros of q of x. So, first step, first step, calculate zeros of q of x. So we have q of x should equal 0, which means 4 plus x to the power of 4 should equal 0. And this will lead us to x to the power of 4 is equal to minus 4. And this means that the four roots, the four results, the four uh, values that we will get will be the fourth root out of minus four. And in order to calculate the fourth root of minus four, we have to transform minus four into polar coordinates in complex numbers. So we have minus four is equal to four times cosine of pi 
plus i times sine of pi. And this is valid because the cosine of pi is equal to minus 1 and the sine of pi is equal to 0. So this is how we get the polar representation of minus 4 in, in, polar, in complex polar coordinates. Yes. So this is how we're going to calculate xk, um, the, the xk's. Let's write here that the k's go from 0 to 3. So 4 is not included. It's like 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, you will see in a moment why this is the case. This is because of the formula that we're going to use to actually calculate the, uh, the roots. So the formula looks like this. Each root can be calculated as the fourth root out of 4 times cosine of 2 pi k plus pi divided by 4 plus i sine times 2 uh, of 2 pi k plus pi divided by 4. And here you can see why we chose k to start at 0 and end at 3, because we're going to plug in for k 0, then we're going to plug in for k 1, 2, and 3, and this is how we will get the four roots of our function. So let's continue and calculate the first root. So x1 then is the fourth root of 4 is just the square root of 2 times the cosine of, now we plug in 0 for k, so we get pi over 4 plus i times sine of pi over 4. And the first 0 that we get out of that is 1 plus i. And we can already tell uh, the imaginary part of this 0 is bigger than 0. So this means we can use it for our residuum. Let's go on. I made a mistake here. To stay consistent, this is x0. Now, x1 is equal to the square root of 2 of uh, times cosine of, now we plug in 1 for k, so we get 3 pi divided by 4 plus i times sine of 3 pi divided by 4. And this in the end will lead to minus 1 plus i. And once again we see the imaginary part of this 0 is bigger than 0, so we're going to use that 0 as well for calculating a residuum. So the third one is the square root of 2 times the cosine of, now we have 5 pi divided by 4 plus i times sine of 5 pi divided by 4. And this is then equal to minus 1 minus i. And here we see the imaginary part is smaller than 0, so we're not going to use that one for the residuum. And the last 0 will be the square root of 2 times cosine of 7 pi, di 7 pi divided by 4 plus i times sine of 7 pi divided by 4. And this leads to 1 minus i. And once again, the imaginary part is smaller than 0. So the only zeros that we're going to use are 1 plus i and minus 1 plus i. And now we're going to calculate the residuum of the function at those zeros. So we need to calculate two residua. So first of all, how do we calculate the residuum? Let's recall the formula. So the formula was the residuum of f at a point xk is p of xk divided by the derivative of q evaluated at xk. Our function f of x is 1 divided by 4 plus x to the power of 4. So this is the integral that we have here. 1 divided plus 4, uh, 1 divided by 4 plus x to the power of 4. Which means that p of x is 1. So p of x is 1 and q of x is 4 plus x to the power 4, which means that the derivative of q of x is 4 times x to the power of 3. So the residuum at a point xk in case of our function then is 1 divided by 4 times xk to the power of 3. So this is it. Now we just have to plug in the two zeros that we calculated before, so 1 plus i and minus 1 plus i into this formula. So first residuum will look like this. So we have the residuum of the function f at 1 plus i, 1 plus i, and this is 1 divided by 4 times 1 plus i 
to the power of 3. So now we just have to calculate 1 plus i to the power of 3. So 1 plus i to the power of 3. Let's simplify that. This is 1 plus i to the power of 2 times 1 plus i. This is, sorry, this is 1 plus 2i minus 1 times 1 plus i. This is 2i times 1 plus i. And this, in the end, will lead us to 2i minus 2. And now we plug that in into this formula here, and we will get that the residuum of the function f at 1 plus i is equal to 1 divided by 8i minus 8. And by expanding this fraction with the third binomial formula, we will eventually get the following. I will spare you the calculation because this is quite simple algebra. So we have minus 1 minus i divided by 16. And similarly, we're going to calculate the residuum of the function at the second zero, which is minus 1 plus i. So let's go. The second residuum. We have the residuum of the function f at minus 1 plus i, exactly, minus 1 plus i, which is 1 divided by 4 times minus 1 plus i to the power of 3. So we have to calculate minus 1 plus i to the power of 3. This is minus 1 plus i to the power of 2 times minus 1 plus i. So here we have to be careful a little bit with the minus signs because you can drop them quite easily. So first we have 1 minus 2i plus, no, not plus, sorry, but minus 1. That's what I meant with the minus signs times minus 1 plus i. So the, the ones, they cancel each other out. So we have minus 2i times minus 1 plus i. And this eventually will be 2i plus 2. So let's plug that in into the formula for the residuum. So we will get residuum of f at um, 1, not 1, um, so minus 1 plus i is equal to 1 divided by 8i plus 8 and we can do it similarly to the residuum above and we will get as a final result 1 minus i divided by 16. So now we just have to sum up the residua because we know that minus the uh, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of 1 divided by 4, 4 plus x to the power of 4 dx is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of the residua, this time it goes from k is equals 0 to 1, residua of f at xk. So this is just 2 pi i times our residua. So the first residuum we had, let's take another color here. So the first one was minus 1 minus i divided by 16, minus 1 minus i divided by 16 plus the second residuum that we calculated was 1 minus i divided by 16. So we have 1 minus i divided by 16. So this is 2 pi i times minus 1 plus 1. They cancel each other out, so we will stay mit with minus 2 i divided by 16. And this eventually will lead to minus so we have 2 pi i, then we have minus i divided by 8, and then we cancel the 2 out, so we have pi i times minus i divided by 4, and this is just pi over 4. So we know that 4 times the integral of minus infinity to plus infinity of 1 divided by 4 plus x to the power of 4 dx will be 4 times pi over 4, and this is pi. So, I hope you liked this video, I hope you enjoyed this integral and how we solved it, how we proved that this very crazy integral, improper integral from minus infinity to plus infinity with a lot of force inside is equal to something with pi. I find that very stunning. So, 
yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like. That would be really cool. That helps with the algorithm a lot. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, become a path integrator. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. And let me know in the comments if you would like to maybe see a video on how on why we can actually do the uh, use the residuum theorem the way we did it because there's actually a, a proof for that and that proof is quite cool so yeah let me know in the comments if you would like to see that um yeah that's it so far so good uh see you in the next video bye